Welcome back to The Deep Dive. You know, today's topic is something that sounds straight out of science fiction, but it's actually becoming very real. We're talking about California's new law regulating what they're calling frontier AI models. And you've clearly been doing some thinking about this too. That stack of materials you send over the bill itself, the analysis, even some opinions from experts, really impressive. So let's just dive right in. California just passed this law, SB 1047. But what exactly are frontier AI models and why is California suddenly so concerned about them? That's the big question. And the bill actually lays it out pretty clearly. We're not talking about just any AI here. Frontier AI models are those massive, powerful systems that cost a fortune to train, over $100 million, just to teach them how to think. Okay, hold on. Over $100 million, that's more than some entire companies raise. Just to train one AI model, what makes them so expensive? It all comes down to the sheer scale of computing power involved. We're talking processing speeds on the order of 10 to the power of 26 operations per second. Okay, I have to admit, even I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around a number that big. 10 to the 26th power. Can you give me a comparison? How powerful is that, really? Imagine every grain of sand on every beach on Earth. It's a huge EE number, right? The computing power of these AI models is hundreds, if not thousands, of times larger than that. Wow, okay. That's a lot of sand. And here's the kicker. These aren't just theoretical systems on some whiteboard. Companies like OpenAI, DeepMind, they're already building and using AI models that fit this description. So these frontier AI models are already out there, and California's only now getting around to regulating them. That seems, I don't know, a little behind the curve, maybe. It's a fair point, and it highlights why this law is so important and so controversial. These models, they have the potential for incredible good, but also massive risks. We're talking revolutionizing medicine, fighting climate change, but also potentially autonomous weapons, devastating cyber attacks. Okay, so we've gone from sci-fi to like a real-life superhero movie situation here. Hmm. Incredible power, but also the potential for serious danger. Exactly. And California is recognizing both sides, trying to get ahead of the curve. Frontier AI models, powerful, potentially revolutionary, and a huge challenge for governments to figure out. And California seems like a perfect testing ground for how to handle this new era of AI. But how does this law actually work? What does it require AI developers to actually do? Let's unpack that after the break. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Before the break, things were getting pretty intense. We were talking about the sheer power of these frontier AI models. And of course, the million dollar question, or should I say the hundred million dollar question is, what does this California law actually make AI developers do? Well, picture this for a second. Imagine these frontier AI models as like powerful, kind of unpredictable creatures, right? Huge potential for good, but also they could cause some serious damage if they aren't controlled. Okay, I'm picturing some kind of super intelligent AI dragon. I like where this is going. Right. So SB 1047 comes in and it basically tells these AI developers, you need to build a seriously strong cage for your dragon. Ah, okay. The cage being, what, strong cybersecurity measures? Exactly. We're talking robust cybersecurity to make sure no one's hacking in, no one's misusing these AI systems. Makes sense. But even with a cage. Yeah. What if this AI dragon gets a little, you know, out of hand? Well, that's where the next part comes in. Let me guess an emergency shutoff switch. You got it. The law requires what they call a full shutdown capability, a way to instantly take that AI offline if it starts doing something unexpected, dangerous. A kill switch, basically. Exactly. You don't want to wait till something goes wrong to realize you have zero control. Not with an AI dragon on the loose, that's for sure. But even with a cage and a kill switch, these things are complex. What about the humans in charge? the ones building and using these systems. That's where the, let's say, the instruction manual comes into play. Yeah, okay. The law mandates these super detailed safety and security protocols, basically a step-by-step -step guide for developers, mm -hmm. proving they're doing everything possible to build and use this AI responsibly. So it's not enough to just have safety measures. You have to prove you're following them every single step. You got it. Yeah. And to make sure it's legit, they're required to have independent audits. Think of it like, Having an outside expert come in and say, show me your cage, let me test that kill switch. Prove to me you're actually following this instruction manual. Okay, so transparency and accountability are clearly a big deal here. But I'm guessing, with all this talk of regulation, especially in the fast-moving world of AI, some people are worried about stifling innovation, right? 
Absolutely. In fact, some of the articles you sent really highlighted that concern. Yep. And for good reason, there are legitimate questions about whether this level of regulation could slow things down, especially for smaller companies, startups. Who might not have the resources to comply with all of this, right? Exactly. We're talking audits, security protocols. That's a lot of overhead, a lot of expense. So it's not just about the AI itself. It's about who has the resources to even participate in this new world. And that's a whole other conversation. We haven't even touched on open source development, which is huge EE for AI. Right. And how does that even work with all these rules? Exactly. It's a tough needle to thread. No doubt. We've got safety, responsibility, and now the question of who even gets to innovate. We'll dive into all that right after this quick break. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. We've been exploring this new California law, trying to pin down how it's going to shape the world of these powerful AI models. It's a tricky situation, for sure. We've talked about the potential benefits, the risks, but of course, it's never that simple. You said some really interesting articles, and some people are downright skeptical about this whole thing. Yeah, and some of the criticisms are coming from real heavy hitters in the AI field. Oh, yeah? Like who? Well, there's one article by Jan LeCun. He's a big name in AI research. He actually called some parts of this bill, and I'm quoting here, naive. Naive. That's pretty harsh. What does he find so problematic? Well, one of the biggest concerns is that this law might actually stifle innovation, especially for smaller companies, startups. They might not have the resources to keep up with all these new rules. Right. We were just talking about the cost of complying with all this, the audits, the security. Exactly. It all adds up. Imagine you've got this amazing AI idea, but you can't even launch in California because you can't afford the legal and technical burden. It's almost like creating a barrier to entry. Right. Only the big players can afford to play the game. Exactly. And then there's a whole world of open source AI, which is huge for innovation. How do you even regulate that? These are global communities, volunteers working together. It does seem at odds with the whole idea of strict oversight and control, doesn't it? Totally. And that brings us to another major challenge, enforcement. Right. Even if everyone agrees these AI models need to be controlled, how do we actually make sure that happens? These AI systems, they're evolving so quickly. It's like trying to nail down a moving target, and we don't even fully understand how it moves yet. So we've got this law that's trying to set clear boundaries around something that's inherently unpredictable. Yeah. It does feel like we're just at the tip of the iceberg here, doesn't it? I think that's a great way to put it. This California law, it's a huge first step, no doubt, but it's just the beginning of a, a much bigger conversation. About the role of AI, the ethics, the impact on society. And it's a global conversation. It's not just about California. It's about the future we're building together. Absolutely. This deep dive, it's really been eye-opening. We started with a single law, and now we're talking about the future of humanity. A huge thank you to you, the listener, for sending over all this incredible material. And as we step into this new world of powerful AI, stay curious, stay engaged, and keep asking the tough questions. That's all for this deep dive. See you next time.